All right, guys, as Linux gamers, we have to accept the fact that with gaming on Linux, we sometimes have to wait to be able to play some of our favorite games. Proton isn't perfect, and neither are the drivers on Linux. The point I'm making isn't that the drivers are bad or that Proton is bad. Far from it, actually. The strides that Linux gaming has made in the past decade are outstanding. I will die on the hill that Linux gaming stands on. However, that being said, as a diehard Linux enthusiast, I can admit that sometimes there are downsides to using our wonderful operating system to game on. A lot of times, games are not working day one. We can't play some games even in a virtual machine due to shady anti-cheats. And finally, we don't get all the bells and whistles that Windows gamers get. What's one of the big ones I'm talking about? Ray tracing, of course. Before I start ragging on ray tracing, let me explain briefly what ray tracing is and why it could be good for the gaming industry, yet why it fell so horribly short of this goal and why we aren't really missing it on Linux, although support is rapidly growing even on AMD. So what is ray tracing? For the vast majority of 3D gaming's existence, we have had a tool that we use similarly in the real world to gauge the location and size of an object. This tool is one that is inescapable to all matter. The shadow. Shadows in gaming work a little bit differently to how they work in the real world though. They would use a special type of texture called a shader map that would be placed and warped relative to the location of an object in a light. Shadow maps are very reliable and non-resource intensive solutions to shadows in games, relying mostly on VRAM like most textures in games, especially nowadays. Recently, however, a quote-unquote new type of shader technology called ray tracing has emerged. Ray tracing itself is nothing new. 3D animation has been using it in the industry before the turn of the millennium. Toy Story is one notable example of a movie that has used ray tracing technology in a great effect, but the difference between ray tracing and rendering work and in a real-time game is exactly that. You would need it to essentially compile the shadows in real time. That is because ray tracing calculates the actual rays of light, hence the name, which serves to create realistic lights and shadows because light actually works very similarly to this in the real world. As you can expect, however, this is an incredibly intensive computational task. It can and has obviously been done on GPUs in the past. However, its use in gaming would be far too intensive on a regular graphics card to produce a usable refresh rate. As such, the invention of the ray tracing core has come along. Ray tracing cores are cores that serve a specific function to calculate the paths for these rays as quickly as possible. Similar to how crypto mining specific GPUs generally have chips that only serve to calculate hashes as fast as they can. Thanks to these special cores, rays can be calculated quickly enough that they can be used in our games at refresh rates above 60 plus hertz. When done correctly, ray tracing can make a game not only really pop, but also extend the life of a game because rather than being a rasterized shadow map, Ray tracing is more akin to vector technology. No matter how far you zoom in on it, because it will always be visually stunning and geometrically perfect. So what's the problem? The problem is that ray tracing in gaming isn't really being used for this purpose. Don't get me wrong, there are games that use it in all the best ways. But for every AAA game that comes out with ray tracing used to good effect, there are 10 plus games that use it to cut back on work and it really shows. Portal RTX, for instance, runs like dog shit. Dark Tide runs like dog shit. And honestly, regular shadows look better in that game anyways. Forspoken runs like dog shit and looks like dog shit. A game that is often compared to Forspoken in terms of gameplay and visual quality is Assassin's Creed Unity. How is it that a game from 2014 looks better than a 2023 title that demands a $70 price tag? I'll break it to you simple. They cut corners. They cut corners in a lot of places. And what was it that they used to try and pick up the slack for them a bit? Goddamn ray tracing. Portal RTX isn't meant to be a treat for you to use your ray tracing equipped card and experience visual ecstasy. It's a tech demo to make your 30 series RTX card look like a weak piece of shit and sell you a goddamn $2,000 4090 because that is what the recommended card for Ultra at 1080p 60 is for that game. Forspoken isn't doing this, but you know what they are using? They're using ray tracing to try and make their game look better because they didn't put enough effort into the graphics of the game or even think about what else actually makes a game look good. A game doesn't look good just because it has ray tracing. Quake 2 RTX only has good lighting. 
You can clearly see the aged textures, models, lack of post-processing because the game is from the late 90s. They just put a ray tracing coat of paint on it. And that's exactly what Forspoken is. A game that is visually from 2007 with a ray tracing coat of paint on it. The worst part about it, both of these industries serve to try and oversell on GPUs and underdeliver on games. It's about money and how much they can rip out of you, the consumer. There is absolutely no reason that a GPU that you can buy for $300 should not be able to play a modern AAA game on high at 1080p 60. Remember that there are consoles that almost cost that much that can do that. You shouldn't be expected to pay a used car damn near enterprise level prices for a consumer graphics card. I remember back in 2013, the 780 Ti was the top GPU of that year, and you would pay about $700 for that card back then. That was the best card of the year. It beat out the $1,000 GTX Titan, the one everyone drooled about, 6 gigs VRAM, and we didn't even think we'd ever need that much to play on games back then. If we take a look at Cyberpunk 2077, that game looks gorgeous with and without ray tracing. Notice that I said that it looks great on both options. You know why? Because the game has good shaders, yet runs nearly twice as fast without ray tracing. The most you'd be able to tell the difference is that with ray tracing, the reflections would look a little bit better. You don't need ray tracing to make a game look good. Ray tracing is being used as a gimmick to sell you expensive ass cards that they will try to get you to replace within two years. Think about it. What is the other technology that no video has tried to push on you to use with ray tracing? DLSS. Why would I use an upsampler to make my game run better with ray tracing if with DLSS I am not even going to be able to see that detail? It's going to be crunched to a smaller resolution, then blown up, then fixed with a little AI trickery to try and make your game look a little bit better. But the idea to have to even combine those two technologies is so smooth-brained, it is honestly laughable. Please, don't support these companies with their terrible behavior. Vote with your dollar. Buy an older generation card. You can already get a 6900 for under $600, a 3090 Ti for like $700, $800. That card retailed for a base of $2,000 itself, already made obsolete, with the 4090 barely a year later. Thanks for listening to my little rant, and if you are in the market to build or upgrade your PC, please make the right decision. It has never been a better time to build a PC. Top level GPUs are cheap as hell. AM5 just came out, so you have an entire platform of AM4 processors that will tide you over for a long time. You don't need a 7900X. You don't need a 7900XTX. You don't need a 13900K. You don't need a 4090 Ti. Thank you and have a wonderful day.